Hello, it's Stat 134, Lecture 33. Last time we were talking in Section 5.4 about the convolution formula for the density of y over x. So here z is y over x with x and y positive. The convolution formula is shown here highlighted. And uh, uh, a nice example of this, uh, take u1 to un iid standard uniforms let y be the kth order statistic and x be the nth order statistic where k is less than m then the uh the dent so then the the ratio of the kth order statistic um over the nth order statistic where here we have n darts is equal in distribution to the kth order statistic uh in which way in which case we have n m minus one darts both are a beta k n minus k. Uh, the way to think about this is that uh, because uh, the n, because m is greater than k, if we if we call the the mth dart one, then there are m minus one darts that landed before it. And we are looking at the kth, uh, the kth of those m minus one darts. So, in that sense, um, they are equal in distribution. Uh, in other words, they both are a beta k n minus k. Today. Uh, we're going to review the student explanation from the concept test. We'll look at the conditional distribution in the discrete case starting chapter 6, and then the conditional expectation and rule of average conditional expectations. So x is standard uniform, y is standard uniform. We look at their density. z is between 0 and 1. And uh, the correct answer here was um, b. Uh, one person notes that we integrate from 0 to 1 because the slope is between 0 to 1. So it goes to the end of where x can be in the joint. So if you look at this picture here, uh, the slope of the line y equals zx is z. And because z is between um, 0 and 1, uh, x can be anything between 0 and 1. Uh, another person says, I used the previous formula and integrated so-and-so. However, I have no idea what's going on. Well, uh, that can sometimes happen, and I appreciate your honesty. Uh, so here on the right, I've written out why the answer is a half, but uh, we're going to gain some intuition about why this is the case. So another student writes correctly that y over x is uniform over 0, 1, but fa fails to note that the probability that z is between 0 and 1 is a half, since um, z is between 0 and 1 if and only if x is greater than y, and x and y are standard uniforms. Um, so, so then, but how did the student know that y over x is uniform? Well, I assume that they thought of uh, uh, x and y as darts were throwing at the unit interval. And assuming that x is greater than y, um, x would be the max and y would be the min. In other words, y is the first order statistic in 2 and x is the second order statistic in 2. As we were saying above, this is equal in distribution to the first order statistic in 1, which is just a standard uniform. So, uh, however, um, z is, is standard uniform only half the time. So f of z is, is a half, not 1. Now, what happens on the other half when z is greater than 1? So if we let t be x over y, in this case t is 1 over z, we can just use the change of variable formula. And uh, so we have the density of t is 1 over the absolute value of minus 1 over z squared. 
times the density of z, evaluated z is 1 over 2, is 1 over t, and that will give you 1 over 2t squared. And so I drew a picture here of the density of z. It's 1 half between it's one half between zero and one, and then after that it's one half, one over two z squared. I hope that helps. So, uh, starting chapter six, conditional distribution, um, we have Bayes' rule. Uh, so here, um, x and n, we have a joint distribution, <clears throat> and we can write Bayes' rule as um, as this multiplication rule here, highlighted. So the rule of average conditional probabilities, um, the most important part of, of section 6.1, says the marginal probability is a sum over all of n of, um, of probability that x is x and n is n. Um, that's just the definition of the marginal probability, or summing out n. And you can write each of those joints using our formula highlighted above. So for example, um, let n have Poisson lambda distribution and x be a random variable with the following property. For every n, the, the conditional distribution of x given n as n is binomial np. Find the unconditional distribution of x and state its parameters. So we have n is Poisson lambda, x given n as n is binomial np. We need to find the unconditional probability of x. We use um, our multiplication rule. And plugging things in here and doing a trick where we write lambda to the n is lambda x, lambda n minus x. And then um, using uh, um, a Taylor series um, for that infinite sum we get that as e to the lambda q, and voila, we see the out pops of the, um, the formula for Poisson lambda p. And we recognize Poisson lambda p from Poisson thinning. Uh, so for example, if n is the number of cars in one minute, n is Poisson lambda times one, p is the probability of a car being red, x given n equals n, is the number of cars, number of red cars given n is n. And um, x given n is n is binomial np. x is the number of red cars in one minute. x is Poisson lambda p by Poisson thinning. So on to conditional expectation. So again, Bayes' rule, uh, we did some exercises here where I gave you a joint distribution and I asked you to compute the, the conditional probability. So here the probability that t is 3 given s is 7. Uh, this is the joint, which you recognize as 0.3 in the table, divided by the marginal probability s is 7 is 0.4. So we get 0.75, similarly, probability that t is 4 given s is 7 is 0.25. Um, the expectation of t, just using the definition, we have two values for t, 3 and 4, and they have uh, marginal probabilities 0.6 and 0.4, so we get 3.4. And then the conditional expectation, um, we have two values for t, 3 and 4, and we use the conditional probabilities that we computed above. Um, so uh, we get 3.25. Um, gave you another one to practice. Uh, expectation that t, um, expectation of t given s is 6. Uh, again, two values, 3 and 4 of t. And then we had to calculate those conditional probabilities. And, they're each half, so we get 3.5. And so, um, so we have three expectations for different values of s, and in this way you can think of it as a function of s. 
I attempted to make sort of a visual representation of this by representing the joint distribution as this kind of scatter diagram. So you can see, for example, that when T is three, um, uh, S is five, you get, that's 0.1, so I put one dot. Uh, S is six is 0.2, so I put two dots. And S is seven is 0.3, I put three dots. And, and similarly for T is four, so um, then the conditional expectation, um, you're just focusing on the row. So for example, um, where S is seven, um, the, we have three dots on the left and one dot on the right, so it pulls the, the, um, the center over to the left. Uh, for S is six, um, we have two and two, so the conditional expectation is right in the middle. So the two main points is that the conditional expectation is a function of S, and that the conditional expectation is a random variable, so it has an expectation. So next, we'll explore the expectation of the expectation. And so um, we can write the conditional expectation as a function of S, and so the expectation of g of s has the usual formula. Uh, this is 3.4, so you can think of that as the, um, the average of each of these x's here in this scatter diagram, uh, weighed by the probability of the various values of s, so those marginal probabilities. So um, in other words, the expectation of Oh yeah, so the, notice that 3.4 is the expectation of T. So, so in other words, the expectation of the conditional expectation is the expectation of T. This is called the property of iterated expectations. And it's quite intuitive. If you have a class that's two-thirds girls and one-third boys, um, and the girls weigh an average of 100 pounds and the boys weigh an average of 200 pounds, then the average weight of the class should be two-thirds times 100 plus one-third times 200. So in other words, we're taking the weighted average of the averages. Um, so you can see the end of these notes for a formal proof. Uh, we did two examples here. I'll go over them quickly. Uh, so you have eight transistors uh, of type 1 uh, following a distribution exponential 1 over 100, four transistors of type 2 following a, a distribution of exponential 1 over 200. We know that the um, expectation of type 1 is... Uh, 100 and the expectation of type 2 is 200 so the expectation of all the transistors you can just use the formula for conditional expect ex the iterated expectation so it'll be 100 times 8 over 12 plus 200 times 4 over 12 is 133.3 um, another example we did was x is geometric uh, on 1 2 and so on um, suppose y is a variable such that given x is x, y is uniformly distributed on 1, 2, up to x, find the expectation of y. So uh, again, we're going to use the formula for iterated expectations. y given x is uniform 1 to x, and we know that the expectation of a uniform 1 to x is 1 plus x over 2, where x is a random variable. Taking the expectation of that expectation, uh, of that um, conditional expectation, we get the expectation of 1 plus x over 2, which is 1 half plus 1 over 2p. Okay, that's the show for today. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.